Hi, I'm Mark Mancini from VRB Outstanding. This week's episode is on wedding venues and specifically our new Tiki build. Thanks for joining us again this week on VRB Outstanding. Some of you short-term rental owners have homes that could possibly host weddings. Some of you are probably petrified of that idea. I'm here to assure you that if you have the correct venue, it's actually a very lucrative way to not only increase bookings, but increase your, your money you're getting for that event because you're charging an event fee. So we're doing a couple episodes on weddings throughout the year. I want to actually do one this week on the new tiki that we're building or have built. Uh, we actually have a wedding in four days, our first wedding. It's pretty exciting. And as you can see, we're still doing some work. The lighting is going to be finished tomorrow night. The electric, we hope, is ready by tomorrow as well. But the tiki is built, and that's the most important part. Now, for wedding venues, a couple things to consider whether you're at the beach, in the mountains, and farmland, etc., is you want to make sure you have a place that has ample parking. That's the biggest criteria. Or at least a way to get guests to the event and handle their cars in some way, whether it's a shuttle service or something like that. Luckily here we have almost three acres, plenty of parking for guests, and we have a spectacular backdrop to get married in, the Florida Keys. Back there we have the lighthouse for Alligator Reef and beautiful blue water. Usually people get married, have their ceremony right here either in front of the palm with the furniture removed or they'll get married just to the right of this palm tree and we'll put chairs all throughout here and we plan to host weddings of up to 250 people here. Now we also need a place for the reception. And that's where the tiki comes into place. Now this tiki started off as about a 2,000 square foot tiki. It ended as a 3,600 square foot tiki. Now, you can see it's a square shape with a hollow out middle. And we've got electricians right now. Maybe you can see up through here, we're running conduit for electrical. We already have string light in place. We also, aside from the string light, we put in up and down lighting here on four of the posts, or I'm sorry, eight of the posts. And that helps give it an ambient effect. Now, this lighting and the next lighting I'm about to show you is all landscape lighting. It's 12 volt DC. Now, I want you to think about that. We could have run regular AC typical lights, but we have flexibility because with DC power, we just run raw wire, just like landscape lighting, to all the lights. Now what we're doing is we're doing up lights on each corner of the inside, and we're angling it out to the middle. So we have eight spotlights going to the up light, has a remote control, has different colors. So here at the Oasis, if someone has a wedding and they have a certain theme color, whether it's blue, red, yellow, pink, whatever, we can go ahead and change the color for them. And all of that is going to be back here at this transformer. This is your typical landscape lighting transformer. All the lighting is run through here. We also have our electrical sub panel that it'll plug into. This is the sub panel right here. And this is all going to mount back here. Now we had to put it high up. We had to be 11 feet above the mean uh, high tide water table. So it's going to be up real high. Um, we also back here did a couple things. In two of the corners, we put in cameras. 
We always recommend security cameras. You can check back one of our episodes on wired or wireless cameras. That's a Hikvision turret uh, camera uh, or, or dome style, but uh, they call it turret, uh, not turrets, turret. And we have that here just simply because um, if someone books the Oasis and wants to have a wedding here and doesn't tell us, doesn't want to pay the fee, we can know ahead of time. So it's more or less for us to keep a tab on the guests who may want to try to have a free wedding. The other thing you'll see here, and it's lit up nice and blue, is our wireless access point. That's a Ubiquiti Wi-Fi hotspot. Now in future episodes, we're going to talk more about hotspots and mesh Wi-Fi and how to best optimize your network. Now here at the Oasis, we've got a corporate enterprise grade Ubiquiti Wi-Fi setup. We've got several access points throughout the three acres to ensure that guests can have great wireless speeds because we have 1.2 gigabit speed. So at the wedding, we'll create a guest network and we'll call it wedding guest. There's no password, gets them on the Wi-Fi, So all the guests can take videos and pictures, upload them to the web and social media as our uh, bride and groom gets married and as they celebrate uh, their, their, their first dance together underneath the stars in the middle of the tiki. As you can see here, we have a tiki that opens up in the middle and the stars at night light up. It is absolutely amazing. If you ever get to the Keys, you're gonna have to rent my place. So, shameless plug. By the way, <clears throat> we have a lot of information, not only on wedding venues, but other things. If you wanna have a, a specialized fishing niche for your short-term rental or family vacation spot for larger homes or other different niches that uh, uh, that you may have and we go into the course at vrboutstanding.com it's the only short-term rental course we are for guaranteed satisfaction guarantee or your money money back that's how sure we are about it but here in our weekly videos we want to make sure we share with you what we're doing so here in this tiki it was several months delayed but they got this thing done in about eight to 10 days. Uh, it was very, very quick because they had guys working 12 to 14 hour days. Now we're gonna do the receptions here. 3,600 square foot should hold 200 to 250 people. Now, the other thing I wanna to mention too is with weddings, you'll either have a buffet style or a seated uh, served style. When you have a seated wedding, you'll have less guests. When you do a buffet, you can have more. So generally we'll serve 250 buffet style here or 200 with seated service. Now, aside from the electrical, the other thing we're missing is to get this raw sand that's kind of a little bit uh, uneven graded. And that's gonna happen in the next 48 hours. We're gonna have one of our contractors come on out, bring in actually four truckloads of sand to help after he loosens this up to put more sand on top and help grade the rest provide a nice even look now initially we were charging an upcharge of five thousand dollars for a wedding on top of our weekly fee we've since raised that because we want the bigger tiki we spent the extra money on the lighting added a couple other features that typically aren't provided at a, at a boutique wedding venue. So now we're charging 7,500. And if you have over 150 guests, we're charging $10,000 more. Now, for those of you either at the beach or if you've got a farmhouse on land, because I tell you, a lot of people have these five, 10 acre lands in either in the mountains or in farmland, and they've got this big barn to hold weddings. That is ideal for weddings. And I can tell you that you can definitely not only earn more money, but get more bookings from that. And what you want to advertise it as, as a niche wedding, because anyone can get married at a resort and go through a checklist of A and B. Do you want A or do you want B? Do you want A or do you want B? And what happens is you'll have 20 people have a wedding at a place and you would think there's 20 different looking weddings, but there really isn't. It's actually probably about two or three different looking weddings. It's the food's gonna be the same, the music's gonna be the same, the look is gonna be the same. But when you have a short-term rental that's a wedding venue, you're gonna to cater to more of an upscale 
clientele because you're gonna advertise it as a boutique venue. What we always tell our brides is that this is a blank canvas. You get to paint your wedding. It's not A or B, it's A through Z, whatever you want to have your day. So we actually have one of our uh, brides-to-be, and I believe it's this one coming up this weekend. Over here is the centerpiece on the beach. They've got an old, one of those old style convertible cars with the um, luggage, uh, piece of luggage on the back that they're gonna park here on the beach as the backdrop. They're gonna have the photo booth and everything else that goes along with the wedding, but they're doing that. Now another guest is having a food truck come. They wanted to have advertisers, they wanted to have the look and feel of casual food truck. Another one, a previous wedding that they had here at the Oasis, when it was called H2O Villas, they actually had, um, at the end of the wedding, probably around, I don't know, 10, 10, 30, things are winding down. They ordered pizza, had pizza delivered here, and they had pizza with uh, and, and beer, and that was the way to send everyone off, the kind of a casual way to send the night. Weddings can be done for any kind of budget. Food, people don't remember the food. But the venue, they always remember the venue. And that's why having something unique, especially a short-term rental like caters for that, to me, I think you're, you're capturing a niche. If you've got one like this, that's amazing. Now, there's a, optional insurance you can get through WedSure. That's the bride and the groom's responsibility. The bride and the groom are the ones that are hiring the caterers and the bartenders. So actually, they're the ones that are liable. Now, you still have to carry your liability insurance. So get with your insurance agent. But for about $240, $242, Wedgeshire has $2 million of insurance that the bride and groom get, and it creates a barrier in between you and them and the guest so that, remember, they're the ones who hire them. So if there's food poisoning or they were, they were served too much, it's not on you. The bride and groom hired them. So this is what we do with our Tiki. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of VRB Outstanding's Wedding Venues. We're gonna go into more detail on this as you have video and pictures from our first wedding here. And remember, we're at the Oasis in Alamarada, Florida, and we also have an amazing video coming up in the next couple of weeks that uh, you need to stay tuned on. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. I'm gonna tell you it's absolutely amazing. And don't forget, subscribe to the video link below, and we'll see you again next week. Take care.